Hello friends, welcome. If you're just joining me here, I'm Melissa and today we are going to do a little planty update. I do these every couple of months and I like to basically just walk you around my plant collection and kind of fill you in on everyone, especially if it's a plant that I recently like talked about, repotted. I share like new growth, uh, good updates. I share bad updates. I kind of just fill you in on everything. I lasted one in December, so we are now like into February. So I really hope you enjoy and we're gonna get started here in our plant room first. It was just sunny and now it's gloomy and cloudy. I wonder if it's gonna rain. But maybe it's a good thing cause it's not super bright in here. So sometimes when the sun is beaming, uh, this entire area is backlit, so it's really hard to show you guys updates on everyone. Just ignore the mess on the table over here. I'm doing a bit of a science experiment. I bought a fancy meter. It tests for uh, pH, EC, salinity, um, TDS, temp. It's by Apera. Um, my test subject is my Alocasia Jacqueline, so we can start with her. As you can see, she's got some uh, nutrient deficiency is what I concluded after testing her water. I just upsized her and I'm like retesting her water uh, based off my findings. I still don't know how much fertilizer to give some of my plants in ponds. So uh, it's definitely gonna be a bit of a challenge for me to kind of get the hang of hydroponics and growing in pond for some of my plants. I have a lot of testing to do on a lot of my pond plants, so I'm probably gonna take some time to do that a bit later because I have to water a few plants later today. But yeah, she's down to two leaves. This one has a little bit of yellowing, but not as much as this one here. And the new growth that she was pushing out has been a little stagnant for a while. So yeah, I'm hoping in some time here, I can kind of figure out my whole pond situation and have some happy plants growing in pond. <laughs> uh, you guys know my huge Michelitziana back there. I haven't tested her water yet, but I'm going to. So these are all in pond here. I have my two variegated Fridex in the front and then the two green Michelitzianas in the back. I recently did a whole video where I upsized them all and they're all doing well since the upsize. The Michelitziana in the back just pushed that new leaf. It is a bit smaller. The variegated ones are doing well. I have a new growth spike on uh, that one right there. The leaves and everything seem very happy. And then this one down here has pushed a lot of new growth too. But yeah, happy to report they are stabilized since the whole upsize situation and you know, they didn't shock or anything. It's just finding the uh, nutrient solution is going to be my issue with pond from here, like on out. I just gotta get that figured out. I also am going to be uh, rinsing my pond now. Before I was just using it straight out of the bag. I am finding it to be extremely dusty and I would rather rinse it now first. So probably tomorrow I have some up, uh, repotting to do in pond and some upsizes, so I think tomorrow I'm going to take the rest of my pond that I have and rinse it really good and then store it once it dries completely and then I'll have like fresh pond to use. I have no idea why that grow light is not on. That is so weird. I wonder if it tripped or something. That is so, <laughs> that is so strange why that's not on. Uh, but yeah, in this little corner here, since I'm kind of showing you, nothing really new. My syndapsis plants are growing like crazy, especially my exotica there. You can't really see how full she is. I have a ton of vines bunched in there and she's starting to trail back down. <laughs> I propagated my um, uh, jade satin recently. I took a bunch of cuttings and she's starting to uh, grow back in since I did that. They're all propagating in my other room because I wanted to do and take some props to have for the shop. But they are a loving life. I probably need to water my exotica soon. You see she's a bit curly. I usually wait until I see some curling before I water her. I have a Linearis Hoya there on the end and I do have some props there right here that are rooting. And then I have props of the Hoya um, Curtisii there. And this was a upsize that I did repot and it's doing, uh, 
I feel like it's doing really well. I have a trailing micans here, and then I have a lemon lime heteraceum there. These two anthuriums here, uh, this is my podato radiatum, put out a new leaf right here. And I do get a lot of crisping on this plant. I'm wondering if it's something fungal. Uh, I might treat this one with Fizen 20, or maybe it's probably just like watering and consistency, but I feel like it crisps the edges up a lot. And then the inflow, I took pollen off of that. So I was waiting to see, uh, that should be yellowing off. And this is my crystal mag. <laughs> I had propagated it because I think it had some weird fungal thing. This main leaf that's left is pretty grody looking, but it pushed out this inflow, which is pretty new. This is my uh, mama plant that I took all those seedlings from that I pollinated. So she'll grow back in some time. I just kind of cut off her entire <laughs> Uh, chonk uh, pretty much because yeah all the leaves were just looking really bad I don't know if it was inflow stress or something fungal all this crisping has happened ever since I propagated this plant so that leaf is going to be cut off as soon as I get a new leaf but I'm leaving it on for photosynthesis so it's kind of back here in the corner that one is in pond and this one is in a chunky soil mix you guys are familiar with the shelf back here I kind of switch things around on the shelf all the time to try and make room for everyone. They can get pretty close to the Barina light there that I have, so I have to end up moving them out. Uh, like this Mickey Mouse alocasia, I had it right there, but I had to take it out because uh, one of the leaves burned on it already. So it has two leaves left. This one is in pawn. This is newly put into pawn. And yeah, I need to find a spot for it because <laughs> uh, it is uh, wanting more light. I had moved it like all the way around the other way, whereas this leaf was no way near the light. And within hours, it was already like underneath the grow light. So it had moved. I feel like this one really wants some highlight. These three back here, I'm going to be chopping and redoing on a pole. I have my Florida Beauty shoved in here. It was on the floor. And then I have an Amedrium Medium Silver and then a White Knight. They have all like pretty much extended their poles and uh, I'm just gonna chop them back and I've been sort of neglecting them down there. I don't really take the best care of them. So uh, yeah, I have some work to do on some poles still. That variegated heart leaf is a pole that I have yet to do. I'm gonna be chopping and restarting the top section and propagating the rest up. And then I have a silver stripe phyllo back there that I think I'm going to take off the pole. I don't think I want it climbing anymore, or at least I haven't decided what I want to do with that one back there. Look at this Florida ghost. This is a huge leaf it gave me recently. Isn't that massive? That is a huge leaf. And it's giving me another one here that's pretty ghosty. I love that. Uh, this one is a plant that I just adore so much. It's getting kind of big now. I feel like the leaves are really sizing up. I do need to repot that one, so I'll probably do that soon. Here's a caterpillar that came off. But yeah, I really do love this plant. I love it more than the Florida Beauty, but they are getting a bit wide just because they have these extremely long petioles. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm kind of running into a room, running out of room in here. And then this is my ring of fire, which I adore. I love this plant so much. It's growing a ton. I feel like it grows pretty steadily. I already have a new leaf coming in here. I'm really happy I got it. I got this one kind of late. I have an older video where I did this whole plant on this pole setup. I just think it's a beautiful plant. I just wish I could have more space for them because I, sometimes I feel like I can't enjoy my plants because they just get too big and then I kind of squish them back here in a way, if that makes sense. I don't think you guys have seen my Monstera Oblica. I did this one not in a regular video. I restarted this one on a pole and it's starting to activate a bunch of new growth. I kind of just took the top section and brought it back down to the bottom and extended on top and then I'm propagating all the cuttings that I took. So I'll have a ton of Monstera Oblica in some time once they grow. I waited too long to extend it and then it was growing runners. So I figured the best thing to do would be to completely chop it back. I do have several pink princesses here and this one is in pond and I'm really liking pond for the pink princess. The rest of these are in soil, but I don't think I'm going to keep some of these in soil. This one here that I had done on the pole 
Keith producing really small leaves. So I think I'm going to take that one apart and completely redo it. And then I think one of the ones that are in soil, I'm going to redo. I might stick it in um, pond. This one gave me a beautiful pink leaf. You guys can't really see how pink some of these are. They're so beautiful. I love pink princesses. My El Choco is massive up here. She is in pond. This one is probably, yeah, she is getting ready to pop a new leaf. Uh, this one I am desperately, desperately needing an upsize in pond. She is so root bound. She's probably lacking nutrients. So the only thing I'm waiting on is some more planters. They should be coming next week. Uh, I ordered them from Amazon. So as soon as I get my new planters, I am upsizing her right away. <laughs> and this one here is my serpents. It just gave me a new leaf too. Oh, actually was a little squished back there. She's starting to grow more now. Look how beautiful. This is the newest leaf. I love this plant and the fuzzy petioles on this one. This one has had a really long story with me, a long, <laughs> a long battle to get it to grow, but it's finally growing. Uh, so yeah, I just feel like I can't really appreciate it up there, but again, I don't really have enough room right now. My forgetty eye is growing back. Look at this new leaf expanding. She is beautiful. Uh, I had this plant for a while. It was one of my very first anthuriums. I saved her from root rot and then I put her into ponds. So she's finally happy and finally growing back. Forgetty Eye is probably one of my favorite anthuriums. I adore this plant. This one is new. This is a Crystallinum Silver. It's a little bit sad droopy in pond right now. I feel like the transition, this was one of the ones I got from the Green Escape, probably shocked this plant a little. So I'm hoping it bounces back here. I, my other plant that I got from the Green Escape I'm gonna show you is a bit sad too. And then this beautiful one back here is getting big now. This is the hybrid that I got from Jonah. It's a Forgetii and Doriakii silver and it's pushing some new leaves. Look how beautiful. And there's another beautiful one back there. This Anthurium is gorgeous. I love this one. I just probably need to get it under uh, a different situation here. My uh, Maranta light veins is growing in. I had propagated it and it has some new spikes. It just wasn't growing well. It had flat mites and I just decided to chop it. And I'm glad that I did because it's starting to finally grow in. And then I have a variegated halo micans here that I propagated a ton. So it's finally growing in a little bit. I have a monstera peru in water that I need to pot up that I keep neglecting. <laughs> uh, these two are in pond. I have a monstera peru and this alocasia uh, really seems to like pond, this one here. Uh, so hopefully that one can grow. This is my variegated uh, philodendron. What is this one? I got this one imported and I always forget the name of it. This is a new leaf, isn't that pretty? The new leaf is nicely like variegated, it's like a half moon. I do really like this one and I'll probably end up keeping it. Those are my tissue cultures and they're doing fine. The Syngonium and Variegated Gigantium. This Alocasia, I am transitioning to Pond. This is my Capria, this one is going, but I knew that was the oldest leaf that that would go. So it's got four other leaves and once it kind of stabilizes a bit more in water, I'm going to put that one into pond. I do have a lot of other corms that are in the other room. This is the variegated banana and it's growing a ton. This is the tissue culture. I think I need to upsize it though because I keep underwatering it in this little container. So I'll probably do that soon. It's giving me some interesting leaves. Um, I don't know, I liked these ones down here. But these ones here are a bit curled and it's kind of weird. I don't know if that's like a tissue culture thing or what. <laughs> um, I hope I get some more variegation and this weird curling kind of stops with this plant. So I don't know. I really liked a variegated banana, but you know, this is tissue culture, so I'm not sure how it's going to do or how it's going to grow over time. That one had flat mites as well. So I feel like it's a bit slow to grow. It blooms constantly. I have several Hoyas here that I kind of need to re-situate. They're just kind of stuffed down here for now. Several of these were imported like those three there. And then this is a 
carii that is growing a long stem. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I do have several Hoyas to repot. My Raphidophora tetrasperma is climbing on the wall back there. I'm just letting it do its thing. And then this huge philodendron burl marks variegated is just shoved back in this corner. I will be propagating this plant. I think I'm gonna take a cutting uh, or two and kind of keep as my own plant to kind of trim it back. A lot of it is reverted anyway. It's a philodendron that gets a lot of spider mites, so. Uh, it's not my favorite philodendron. I feel like no matter what, it's bound to get spider mites at some point. Let's do my poles really quick and then we'll do the shelf in front of us in our cabinet. So moss poles, they're amazing. They are just growing away. Everyone is doing well. I just have no words. They're just literally some of my favorite plants in my collection. I love them so much. And some of them are getting massive. <laughs> especially my upper primitive over here. Look at this Jessiana leaf. Do you see how beautiful this is? It is a work of art. Look at that. I mean, these leaves are getting humongous on her and she's got another vine down here that's a bit smaller. And she also has a third vine down there that is the smallest. I am gonna be extending her soon along with Miss Marble, the newest leaf was less variegated, which was kind of sad. <laughs> I do need to, before I extend them, probably anchor them onto the wall because they're gonna get too top heavy because the growth is so big now and the vine is super thick. I did mention that I am gonna be changing up my moss pole mix soon to make it more heavy to support some of these larger poles so that they don't topple over. I've had several fall. <laughs> Uh, Adesonia I fell recently, Majestic fell recently, Marble Queen fell recently. So uh, yeah, I have a lot of work to do with these poles to uh, keep them growing happily. They're probably, uh, they're probably my most cared for plants at this point because I'm always watering them. Look how much my golden is growing. It is crazy. I started this plant, I think, in September, October. It hasn't even been that long and I'm already getting huge leaves already. Nothing like my Marble Queen just yet, but it's gonna get there in some time. It is just growing so well and it's doing amazing. I have my Pearls and Jade. Uh, I think technically it's Pearls and Jade, but several leaves do look like an Enjoy, but to me it looks more of a Pearls and Jade. So I don't know, sometimes I call it Pearls and Jade, sometimes I call it Enjoy, but in my head, it's a Pearls and Jade. And then this one I recently redid. This is the Epipremnum Panatum Marble Variegated there. Oh, hi girlfriend. <laughs> she uh, booped the camera. You guys will see that video before this one. So uh, you'll see kind of what I did. I switched the pole out and then I uh, anchored it on a little bit more. So it should hopefully start attaching in and growing better. A sad little update with Cebu Blue here is it gave me a really long runner after I did the whole chop on this plant a couple months ago. The runner was like all the way up here. So I had to cut it off, unfortunately. So I did that mm, maybe like five days ago. So it hasn't had time to regrow a new growth point from that node. So it's probably gonna be more juvenile now, which kind of stinks, but I'm hoping it won't take long before it sizes up again, because it took me so long to get these mature leaves. Majestic, I have no words. This plant is getting huge, you guys, huge. It is pushing a new growth here, and I do need to extend this one soon. I'm a little bit behind. I have another uh, growth point down there because I have two vines, and I am gonna be repotting this plant as well. Um, it is getting huge, massive. <laughs> um, she's beautiful though. I uh, just did Sorderoy not too long ago, so I repotted this one and extended it. She's giving me a new leaf post uh, repot and stuff. Again, this plant is very beautiful. I love them both. I think they're unique in their own way, both of them. But yeah, I have no words how beautiful these philodendron are. I have Escaletto back here doing well. It's pushing a new growth. And this one was like a chop and extend kind of project. This one was a recent chop and extend too, but it hasn't um, done a huge jump in leaf size just yet. 
Varicosum is doing amazing. I do need to extend this one soon, but I just chopped it. Uh, yeah, I chopped this one a couple months ago too. Same with my Splendid. They're both at the top of their poles again, and I'm not sure what to do because the newest leaves are the biggest leaves yet. Look at this, you guys. That is absolutely incredible. <laughs> this is a huge leaf, massive. I don't wanna chop either of them because I just chopped them. So I may do like a foot extension on that one and I may try for a fifth thickly if I can attach it to the wall somehow, which I'm considering doing. So I'm gonna to have to play around with it one day when I do my other extensions uh, to kind of like look into anchoring them on a little bit better because I don't want them to fall. Miss Adansonii, Miss Massive Adansonii. This leaf is 20 inches long, you guys. It is humongous, insane. <laughs> She's pushing another growth right here and it's gonna be another huge leaf. Uh, it's, just, it's just insane how big this plant is. I keep getting people telling me that this is not an Adansonii and it is. <laughs> it is just a very mature. Oh, I had to sneeze. <laughs> I have a little bit of yellowing on a couple of the bottom leaves, but I think that was just overall stress from a lack of nutrients and everything. But I'm doing my best to kind of feed her well and make sure that she's watered so that she doesn't shock again. So uh, yeah, I'm having to keep a close eye on her. I have Epi Panatum Albo here that is growing away. That one I haven't chopped yet, but I probably will end up chopping that one at some point later this year. I have Syngonium Albo, and then the huge Mikans back there doing well. And then the other poles here, this one I recently did with the uh, Epipremnum Panatum Marble, my Milano. I took her out of the cabinet, I extended her. This one is in pawn, and she's doing very well. I have, I think, four vines total now climbing and she seems to be sizing up and I'm hoping that she does well now that she's out of the cabinet. So I kind of have her right here for now just because I don't have a spot for her. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I would just love to have a mature Milano. I've been trying to grow Milano for over three years. It's definitely a finicky one for me. Dubia, you know, I had chopped and so this is like the new growth post chop. It's a bit smaller. Uh, which is to be expected here. I'm hoping I can start getting some fenestrations on this plant soon. Um, but yeah, once uh, once she reaches the top, which will happen very soon, I'll have to extend this one. Gorgeous make Guayana. I love this Calathea so much. She is my favorite Calathea of all time. I just kind of have her on the floor. She's just centered down here. And sometimes I I need to push her like closer to the shelf so she can get a little bit more light. She was up under there, but of course she quickly outgrew it. So she just kind of lives on my floor right now. So this entire row is mostly alocasia minus the albo on the end. The albo is growing all white. A lot of it is white. I did get some green to come in, but it's in pawn. I have like multiple plants in this pot. So I'm waiting to see kind of what more growth does, but a lot of the new growth is still coming in. <laughs> all white so unfortunately i'm not like able to sell or anything these these ones until they stop giving me white i have several upsizes i need to do with some of these alocasias i need to get some bigger planters and this is my new one that's in water the bisma i am going to be moving this one to pond my heterophylla is growing back look at these beautiful leaves coming in the Senuata or Quilted Dreams. I feel like this one really loves pond. Look at those leaves. Look how shiny and crispy they look. This one is loving Semi Hydro. Yeah, I just feel like some of these, um, I feel like the nutrients may be off. I definitely need to upsize the black velvet. So uh, yeah, I have a lot of playing around to do with my pawn. And then down here I have one Maranta, the variegated one, although it's mostly green. She needs a repot. The silver band is stressing because she is severely root bound. I need to upsize that one like ASAP. My stromanthi is growing back in. And this lemon lime here, uh, I upsized it in pond and she loves it. 
Her leaves are kind of curled down right now because it's a bit later in the afternoon, so they kind of shrink. And then this evening she kind of expands out. And when she does that, she looks so full and beautiful. But she loves her upsize that I did. And then I have a Magnificum down there that is growing in. That's like a new leaf that that one gave me. No changes with any of the plants uh, hanging. I feel like they're all, again, doing well. I do have peduncles coming in on this Hoya latifolia up there. Do you see them? I know it's kind of backlit right now and I have another one right there. So I'm very excited. This will be the first blooms on this plant. Speaking of blooms, this Hoya sunrise, look at all of these peduncles. They're literally everywhere. Everywhere you look on this plant, I have peduncles. It is insane. <laughs> and she has outgrown this tiny trellis. This is one that I need to tackle and redo. She bloomed for a while and then she kind of stopped. And then she all of a sudden, I would say within like the past month, started blooming again like crazy. So yeah, I'm going to have a ton of blooms open in all at once. This obovata here is massive and doing well, this Hoya. The string of pearls are growing in, the turtles. This string of hearts is so long now. Look, it goes all the way down there. It is growing like crazy. And it makes such a mess on the floor. I have to vacuum it all the time. <laughs> the blooms just keep falling. This regal shield, I need to transition to water. So I'm gonna do that one to pond. That little ficus, I'm going to put uh, do with my other one here. My dolphins is coming back a little bit. I have one little spike in that cup down there. And then that Hoya probably needs a repot soon too. My mint here is pushing a new growth point. I feel like the mint is doing very well. Uh, I have multiple nodes that activated there on the bottom. This one is a tissue culture. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to do in some time. Um, <laughs> I'm probably eventually gonna propagate some of those uh, tiny nodes. This Monstera tie is getting ready to push a new leaf. I did upsize this one uh, recently. Yeah, she's very happy in here. I have tons of albos over here. This albo in pawn loves it. This is a new leaf and that is a new leaf. I have two vines on this albo and it just, yeah, it is doing amazing in pawn. You can't really see how beautiful this plant is like look at her look at how beautiful <laughs> these new leaves are I mean she's gorgeous <laughs> I posted her on my Instagram and I didn't put a uh, handle uh, so people wouldn't steal it and somebody somebody posted it on Facebook and so now this album is going around uh, and scammer groups and stuff because I don't know, people are just annoying. So sometimes I hate posting some plant pictures of mine because I know it's gonna be one that just people steal and try to copy and just scam people. I have a new leaf on this one. It's another beautiful elbow. My Monstera Aria gave me this new leaf recently. She's beautiful. She's doing so well. I have another Monstera tie here in the window. This is my bigger one. And this one is actually getting ready to push a new leaf uh, right here very soon. I have a couple more uh, Monstera elbow props there in the window uh, that are giving me some white leaves. I eventually, I want to like sell them as long as they are not producing all white. I'm just kind of waiting to see what they're doing. I have another elbow here. I have lots of elbows. <laughs> Some of these are gonna be like my propagating Monstera albos that I will eventually like sell cuttings of. And then um, some of these I'm keeping for me and like growing to maturity and everything. And then I have a Monstera Stanley on an elbow here that is finally pushing a new leaf. I cut my big plant back. So this is the one that I'm keeping for me. And then the Pilea here and Pawn is doing very well. I'm getting a lot of happy new growth on this plant coming in. So it loves pawn. Um, it seems to be doing very well. I had propagated this. And now that it's like pushing new growth uh, more steadily, I feel like it's actually gonna be <laughs> uh, growing quicker now. Uh, but it seems very happy overall in pawn. I'm glad I made the transition. I just feel like I need to give it more light. Um, it's kind of shaded a little bit by some of these bigger plants in the window. So 
Once I can kind of get some props out of here, I might move them. And once I cut back like my Hoyas and I'm eventually, I think, going to sell that tie, I'll have more room and stuff in this area. But for now, they're just a little bit crammed. <laughs> Uh, for a little bit while longer. Last little update in here is with my Ikea cabinet. And yeah, and then we'll head out to a few other areas. I have this air plant up here for now. This is the new one that I got, the Zero Graphica. I am gonna put my Politiflorums up here though. So I am gonna have to find a new spot for this one. And this is the beautiful terrarium I got. I got some little pings and carnivorous plants. I'm gonna do a whole setup in here and I cannot, I literally cannot wait to do that. It's gonna be for such a fun project. I got this at Ace Hardware and it is like 10 inches in diameter, just such a good size. Let me open this up. I have several like projects to do with some plants in here. I have like my little seedlings down here. I need to pot up. These are the uh, Clara Nervium and uh, Padato Radiatum, my three little seedlings that I harvested. The leaves are so stinking cute. I'm gonna do them, I think, in pawn. The other one, my crystal mag here, um, I potted this one into pawn, you know, I did that already and it seems to be doing well. Uh, I did three of them in there. This leaf coming in on this alocasia, this is the Watsonia uh, Dark Vein. And then bend it this way. Look at her. She is gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> These are my other tissue cultures doing well. This is an ace of spades. My monstera philem here is going to push a new leaf soon. I have the alocasia ninja back there, the variegated. My little ping is coming in. Look at that. I cannot wait to do that little setup for them. And then I have my SP Columbia Silver in Stratum. Here's another new leaf. The Stratum is completely dry, I need to water that. Um, I am gonna move that one to Pond. I have a ton of like little variegated Fridex in there too. Hi, Lulu. Hi, girlfriend. Did you wake up from nappies? Huh? Yeah, did you wake up from nappies? I took a cute photo of her this morning sitting in the sun on the dining room table. I'll have to insert it. She was <laughs> laying beside my politiforums. Hi. Hi, girlfriend. Hi, my love. I am going to do my glory awesomes into pond. Uh, they are, there's three of them there. I don't know that leaf kind of yellowed off here. Tortum leaf. This was a rehab and stratum. I actually need to water the stratum. It is completely dry. <laughs> But I feel like it's stabilizing. I just have to reroot it. It rotted in soil. I have this uh, strappy anthurium here. This is the variegated. I forget the name of it now. It starts with a V. And then my gigas here, uh, again, stratum is dry. I need to water it. <laughs> uh, my uh, gigas needs to rehab. Um, it just needs to root back. I have the smaller one in the other room though. Oh, those gloriosums are pushing new leaves. I didn't see that. I have another little Michelitziana in soil back there. And then my queen anthurium here, the Elsmeralda, is doing very well. I cut an inflow off of her recently and I collected the pollen. I feel like she should probably push a new leaf soon though. The Clara Nervium, I had pollinated both inflows and this one is yellowing, so I'm gonna cut that off. I think it's probably just not able to hold on to two, but this one is pollinated with my Padato Radiatum again. So I'll have more seedlings that um, look like those down there. And I recently did my Manjula as well in that same video with the uh, other two poles. And it's doing well since I did this whole thing. I chopped so much away. Hi. <laughs> yes. What? Y yes. <laughs> She's like, I want cuddles, mommy. But yeah, I chopped so much of it away and I'm getting some bigger leaves, which is just so exciting. I can't wait. I cannot wait for that one to get bigger. So that is everyone in here. Come here. Oh, come here, my love. Oh, hi. Hi, my love. Oh, I know. 
Yeah, how are you? Yeah. She's so cute. Wanna say hi? Wanna say hi? Right there. She's like, nope, I want cuddles. She loves being held uh, when she's in her moods like this. <laughs> She loves like chin scratches. Yeah, I know. She's so sweet. You're so sweet. Yeah. Oh, I know. What'd you see? Hmm? What'd you see? Hmm? Oh, don't bite my finger. Don't bite my finger. It's so cute. Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm going to meet you out there and we'll get to finishing up. I wanted to show you the Hoyas in here. They are doing so well since the whole repot situation. I have not noticed any shock whatsoever. The leaves feel nice and like plump, like they're hydrated. So yeah, they have done so well and I'm so happy with this setup. <laughs> I'm still not much of a fan of the bar, so I may look for something else and switch it out, but for now it works and I'm just happy with how they look, like the plants themselves look uh, hanging here. So yeah, they're doing amazing. Now these shelves here, I have a lot of work to do over here. <laughs> uh, the props are growing in a lot. I think because a lot of my pole props are here, I really felt like two shelves would be enough room, but I honestly, I think I'm gonna need three shelves. Ow, what are you doing? She's trying to bite me. What are you trying to bite me for? Huh? What are you trying to bite me for? <laughs> Cutie girl. What? What? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know. All my little seedlings are doing well. Like some of these are popping off some big leaves. Like look at those. And all the ones in the dome containers, I'm gonna have to take them out soon because they're growing in so much. I'm farming a ton of seedlings. <laughs> oh gosh. But yeah, you can just see them all if Luna moves. <laughs> this is my Cebu Blue Runner back there. And then I propagated something else in here. I'm not sure what it is now. I'm, I can't remember. I didn't, I'm really bad at labeling things. Perlite propagation bin, I actually need to go through. I haven't opened this up in just forever. I have like a strawberry shake in there, philodendron mayoi. I have a ton of props and so I've thrown a ton of wet sticks in here. I just like crack it and then like throw it in there. Ow, don't bite me. And these are all alocasia corms. These are from my variegated uh, alocasia frida chemicaliciana. Luna! And they're starting to sprout. Uh, you can see a little sprout buds there coming in. I didn't peel them, so it's taking them a bit longer. And plus, uh, <laughs> they don't get as much light. <laughs> uh, just the one light uh, under the shelf, so. Uh, yeah, but they're doing well. There's a lot of sprouting going on. And these are, I put two Jacqueline Corms in there and then the rest of them I think is the Alocasia Capria on the end. All of my Cebu Blue props from my pole, a lot of them are pushing growth now, finally. Yeah. Here's my um, Monstera Oblica, all the props. I have Escaletto, I have Mandula now, I have Philodendron. Uh, Glorious. I have Burl Marks Fantasy, Jade Satin. I have Silver Sword, More Tissue Cultures, Splendid, Epi Marble, Jessiana. Tons of random props here. And yeah. Here's my Manjula and Pink Princesses that I did. I have the Baby Gigas here, which is looking a little bit sad. This one's probably rotting too. I have my other Caprias here, <laughs> a lot of props. My Crystallinum here I need to put into pond. More Alocasia props. 
Hi, here is the other jade satin syndapsis that is variegated right here. I did mention in a video that my variegated Adansonii that's growing all white, I'm going to probably pot up with their green plant to see if any variegation comes out. And if it doesn't, I'm just gonna toss it because yeah, I don't wanna grow this plant anymore <laughs> uh, with all the white. I have Monstera dubia, I have my mame that I need to put into pond. And I have a lot of various props, Amedrium, I have Hoya. So yeah, it's very squished, but um, as I like go through and try and get rid of some of this stuff, I will definitely have more room, but I feel like probably a third shelf is definitely in order by summer as I propagate and do more things. Um, I'm just gonna need the space and everything on the bottom I have to keep closed, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to take the top off of those soon. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because of the cats. I might just get a big propagation bin that's a little bit longer that I can kind of have a lid on because yeah, I just don't have, uh, I just don't have the space right now. Huh, girlfriend? Yeah, you're so cute. Oh, I know, Neil, yeah. you're so cute. Ow, you're such a little biter. You're such a little biter, ow. You're so cute though. Yeah, I gotta cut your nails. Yeah, you do. <laughs> she doesn't like her nails cut. I, I struggle with her. I can only do a couple at a time before she wants to bite me. <laughs> so some of her nails are pretty long. I have to, I have to try and cut them when she's sleeping because she wants to constantly bite, you see her. I mean, it's like playful bites, but still I can't like, I can't do it long enough to cut her nails. <laughs> You so cute. You so cute. Yeah. Why do you like to bite so much? <laughs> Nothing new with these guys here. Uh, money tree and snake plants. They will go back outside probably the end of March. Uh, I have my cactus planter and succulent planter still out on the front porch there. So yeah, once uh, spring is here, I'll be doing some rearranging with some plants. I may end up putting a plant there um, that's in my plant room or something uh, in the meantime, just to create more space in there since I have a grow light set up right there. So we'll see what I end up putting there. Over here is this cute little mini greenhouse and I love this so much. And I have one, two, three allocation in here, two Hoya and my variegated micans. This Watsonia here put out a new leaf. This is the white veins. It is beautiful. It kind of looks, um, the texture, I don't know, it's starting to come through a little bit. It's so beautiful, gorgeous. I have the uh, mint, not mint, the pink poly, it's low variegation. And then I have the mint one here. Look how pink that leaf is. Isn't that beautiful? I have the variegated micans right here. And then I have the Croniana silver and the Lachinosis silver mint. So everything is doing really well in this little cabinet. And I think it's perfect for like small little plants and propagations. It's so cute. I know I'm eventually gonna have to move the alocasias out soon cause I wanna do those in pond, but I'm gonna try and leave them in here a little bit longer. That new leaf is just stunning. I don't know if you guys have seen this haul yet, but I just unboxed these pings. I got three pings. I'm going to put them into sphagnum moss a little bit later. But once I do my whole orb, uh, not orb, but terrarium type setup, um, I'm gonna do the pings with the rest of the carnivorous plants. I have a few more carnivorous plants on order. Um, so I'm really excited. So you guys uh, will see this soon. If you haven't seen it already, I'm not sure exactly which videos uh, you guys will see ahead of time because I'm trying to pre-film a bunch right now. And I just unboxed these Hoyas here too. <laughs> Look at these. This is a wishless Hoya, this uh, Polynura Albo Marginata, and then the New Guinea Ghost. And this was a freebie that she gave me. It's a Micro Dwarf NS12323. <laughs> They're so cute. So I just unboxed these. Uh, I'm going to leave them here for right now and um, I'll figure out where to put those. I got them from the Planted Mama on Etsy. It was just a random 
Uh, I was browsing for this plant specifically and her shop popped up and I was seeing what she had available and I saw she had New Guinea Ghost and I'm like, I just have to do it because this is beautiful. And I've been looking for it and I just haven't pulled the trigger yet and it's a wishless Hoya and I really wanted it. I love my regular Polynura so much and this is just stunning and they're fully rooted. Here's my beautiful new Polita Florums. I need to water this one. Um, I might need to water this one too. I'm going to do some watering after this video. This is the newest leaf. It's getting big. I have them right here, but I am going to move them on top of my Ikea cabinet. I did get a clip grow light I'm going to install in there. And uh, yeah, they're going to dangle from my cabinet. It's going to look so good. <laughs> so I can't wait to do that. I feel like this one's actually getting ready to push maybe a new leaf again soon. And this one is too. It's getting ready to push a new leaf um, right there. The infested one is right here. I feel like I haven't seen any thrips come back, but yeah, I need to like rinse these and spray them again. I just kind of have them in this plastic bag right here. Um, I feel like this one might be trying to do something right there, but uh, I'm not gonna throw them away. I'm just gonna rehab them and we'll see kind of what comes back. If I do find more thrips, then <laughs> I may end up just tossing them in the trash. Aren't these roses beautiful for Valentine's Day? They smell so good. I'll just kind of briefly talk about these plants here because yeah, once spring is here, like all these are gonna go back outside. Uh, my Monstera Deliciosa did give me a new leaf. I wanna show you this one here. It is massive. The size of this leaf is insane. Like this is my hand. It is a ginormous leaf, the biggest Monstera Deliciosa leaf I have ever had. <laughs> Uh, I was very happy here. I have three technically in this area, but I do, I think, want to pot these two up together and I wanna plant this one out in the yard down here and see if it'll grow up the tree that we have in our yard. And I'll just cover it if we have cold snaps over the winter for this coming winter and just see what it does. Um, I'm just very curious more than anything. The Birds of Paradise here is pushing some new growth. It's given me a couple uh, new leaves inside. The ficus is doing okay here. Uh, I have lots more props. That's all my Monstera Stanley on an elbow. My Billy is finally giving me a new leaf. It hasn't done anything since I brought it inside. And then my Jose in the window needs to be potted up. I have an Oxalis that's growing back that I need to repot. This begonia is growing like crazy. I need to upsize uh, the pot. It's in water. I just need to get a new vessel and upsize it. But it is growing away. I'm trying to think if there's really any other like updates over here. I need to chop my Monstera Siltipicana. <laughs> it's like way off the pole now here. I may end up just vining her back down instead of like chopping. I may just like do what I've been doing with my micans. Uh, I have a neon pothos here. I forgot to turn this light on. That I need to probably chop and extend. Uh, my Orbifolia here is doing well. My Staghorn is doing well. Marble Queen is growing long. This is my original one that I started my moss pull from. I have a cactus from my neighbor. Uh, I think it's a Thanksgiving cactus. A piece of hers broke off and she gave me it and I propped it and planted it. And I think a bloom is coming in right here. And I see a new little, a new little growth point uh, right there. Do you see it? Right there. Uh, Chameleon ZZ is growing back. I have my Monstera props, Monstera Aria from the import there. Yeah, I have a lot of repotting and stuff to do on the shelf too. So there's a lot going on. It's very full. I definitely need to tame this section. I think I'm ready for spring so I can kind of reorganize my plants a bit more. I'm ready to like cut plants back. It's very overgrown in here. <laughs> so probably like next month. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna be really busy trying to get my website up, so I have a lot to do. It's gonna be a lot. So uh, just trying to take things, baby steps slowly and kind of take it one section at a time, I think, for the spring and kind of work on one area at a time. And I'll eventually be propping, like I said, a lot of my plants back to hopefully sell. And yeah, I'm just excited for it all. So 
that is this little section. Just a quick little update for the plants in here. I would say nothing really going on. There's been some mealy sightings on the Hoyas again, especially the compacta up top. So I'm gonna take them all to the sink and spray them all again here. Um, but yeah, the Marantas and stuff are growing like crazy. They just look a little weird right now because it's the time of the day. Uh, I need to trim some dead leaves and stuff. The uh, Tenanthi there has some dead leaves and stuff. I usually do a monthly trim, so it's about time. Uh, uh, today is Friday, so I have to do it sometime this weekend. I'll probably come through a manicure, everybody here. But I would say everyone's doing well for the most part. I mean, the Hoyas do have a lot of new growth coming in. And my Hoya Rattusa here has bloomed constantly. You can see all the single flower blooms. And in here, no changes really at all either. I need to repot that Maranta, that Maranta. I need, still need to repot this gold and I have not done it yet. <laughs> I will be doing it soon though. I, I know I keep saying that, but I want to like repot. I pretty much want to repot everyone here. Actually, they all need to be repotted. That Calathea does. That little Tenanthe Burl Marxy needs to be upsized. So I might take a day and repot all these and just get this done in one day because I actually want to move that up a bit higher so that this can have more room to hang. I did buy a new pot for this situation. So um, I'll probably do that because I have all that room up there that I kind of want to move her up higher. And um, this is kind of like all trailing down. The top of her won't get much light, but I think it'll be fine. So I do want to take time to do that one day with these. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my update. I still feel like I have a lot to do. <laughs> I have a lot of like repotting to do, upsizes. I have a lot of pole extensions. I have some pole chopping to do, uh, rearranging, cutting back. <laughs> there is a lot to do yet. So my next uh, update uh, will probably be a little bit different because by that time I'll have plants back outside. I'll have a little bit more wiggle room uh, to move some things around. I also hope to have my little shop open in March too. So. Uh, as I like propagate and sell plants, I'll have room to like propagate and <laughs> get some other new plants in my collection. So I'm super excited about that and looking forward to that. If there's a plant that I missed or didn't talk about, leave me a comment down below and I'll let you know how they're doing. Uh, and then stay tuned for like, like I said, a plant tour here soon. So yeah, I am just super excited for spring to get here and all of that. I can't wait. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you here again soon.